Hello everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Nakia and in today's video, we're gonna be doing a q and A. I'm gonna be answering some questions that you guys have been leaving in my comments recently. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first question is a question I get a lot, which is what certification course do I recommend? So first, the only course that I can recommend or the only course I will recommend is a course that I've actually completed, which is the Google Data Analytics Certification course that's through Coursera. That's the only course that I've completed so far. And I actually have an affiliate link. So if you're interested in taking it, I will leave the link below. But I would recommend if you haven't already, watch my review of that Google Data Analytics Certification course because I don't necessarily recommend that it's for everyone to take. Like if you're a true beginner wanting to get an idea of what this job entails, yes, go ahead and take it. But if you're someone who has some experience doing, I would say like you're very good with Excel, you may have some experience in SQL or Python even, like that may not be the course for you to begin with. And there are other courses that I'm kind of like in the middle of taking currently, but I don't wanna recommend something that I haven't actually completed. Like some of these are courses that I will probably review on the channel and then others. I'm just taking for my own personal like knowledge and to um, upskill at work. So not necessarily anything I plan to to record, I mean, plan to review on the channel, but if you guys are interested, leave a comment, let me know. Related to this question was a question that I got about reviewing a, I don't know if it's a, I, I'm gonna assume that it's kind of like a data analytics certification course by Alex the Analyst. And then also someone asked if I would review the advanced data analytics certification course through Coursera. So I forgot <laughs> about the advanced course. Someone asked me about that once when I finished reviewing the other one, like just the standard Google data analytics certification course. And I forgot that I needed to review that one. So I'm going to go ahead and just start a list. Like we're going to eventually have a tier list of different certification courses. So I will put those two on the list of things to do. I'm actually in the middle of another certification course that I do want to review on the channel. I haven't completed, but so far I really do like it. Like this course goes over Python, Excel, and SQL, if I'm not mistaken. And it has multiple projects that you can do. So, so far I like it, but again, can't recommend it until I complete it. And it's been taking me a bit longer to complete it due to work has gotten busy. Like we were in Q3 going into Q4, like work has been super busy. And then also my personal life outside of work has been super busy. So I haven't had time to really take the course like I'd like to. I've just been putting it on in my spare time when I have that to take it. So yeah, it's not something that I've just been able to breeze through because of other commitments that I have going on with work and outside of work. And those are the things that I have to prioritize. So I will try to get to it and get through these courses as soon as I can. But I can't say like I'm going to have this done in like the next week or two, you guys. So yeah, please be patient with me. Okay, so the next question was, what advice do I have for someone that is a beginner or that's wanting to get into data analytics? And my first, my advice at the beginning is one, do your research, get information from a wide variety of sources. Don't fall for the hype on social media about data analytics. I feel like people glamorize the role of a data analyst on social media where they're showing like people working four and five hour days. They're going to the gym. They're going out to lunch with their friends. They're making 100K. Look at my face. That's not the case for everybody. When you're first starting out the role, especially no experience as far as like using the tools it, it can be frustrating. You can be at a point where you're banging your head on the desk trying to figure out some code. Dealing with people can be tough. So I would say get information from a wide variety of sources if you're new and wanting to become a data analyst. Look at different videos. Look at days in the life of people show that. Ask questions for to them like, what exactly is it that you're doing? Like, Act, look at also specific domains that people are in because people will be like, oh, I work in tech. Okay, what exactly are you doing at this tech company though? Like as far as data analytics. So for me, like my area of fo focus is in employee performance management. So I work a lot on reporting out and analyzing 
employee performance, we have different metrics that we hold our employees accountable to, which I'm sure most jobs do. They give you these targets or these goals, or you have a performance agreement where it's like, these are the different metrics that you're being held accountable to. You need to hit this goal. So let's say, for example, if you like, I'm just going to use sales, for example, let's say you have a sales quota of $5,000. That's your goal for sales for a specific product. That is the target and that is what I am doing. I am analyzing how many employees are hitting this target. What employees are not hitting this target? Why are they not hitting this target? Did we make the quotas too hard? Did we make them too easy? Those are the, the different things that I am doing as a data analyst. But look, there are people that are data analysts in different domains and in different spaces. So you can work for tech, but you could be analyzing employee performance or sales performance, or you could be working in healthcare and you could be analyzing healthcare data for different companies and trying to figure out like what products should we have our doctors pushing what's not selling all these different things so just things to consider what domain you want to go into because there are analysts that are doing a wide variety of things so just look at the domain that you're interested in going into so I would recommend trying to go into an area in which you have experience which is what I did like all right so next question was do you need a degree to become a data analyst the answer the short answer is no you don't but that does not mean that employers will not require it or want you to have a degree as you all may know like I just got my degree this year earlier in back in like February so like I and I became a data analyst five years ago so while a degree can help I don't think it's necessary but again that does not mean that employers may not require you to have a, a degree and a degree is a degree it doesn't necessarily mean you need to have a degree in a, like data science or a degree in data analytics, business analytics, they're just looking for you to have a degree, in my experience, but I don't think you necessarily need a degree to do this. Well, I don't think you need a degree to do this job, but that again, that doesn't mean that employers may not require or want you to have a degree or um, I'll just say for roles that I've applied for, they've wanted either you to have a degree or relevant work experience. So, which means experience in the field, which is where to me, domain knowledge can help with that relevant work experience. If you're going to be, you want to become a healthcare data analyst, you have experience, you have relevant work experience in the healthcare field, but you may not necessarily know about SQL, Python, Tableau, and other data analytics tools. That can help you because you have relevant work experience in that domain. So that's my opinion, but no. I don't think you need a degree to do this job. All right. And then the last question is, so someone asked about my journey to becoming a data analyst, which I'm going to do a, a totally separate video talking about that. I feel like I've discussed it before, but it might have, it may have been within another video, like a Q&A or something like that. So I'm going to do a, my own, like a separate dedicated video talking about how I became a data analyst. I don't necessarily think it was a journey, more so of a short story. So I will do that. But they have a question where they asked like if I could do it over what would you do knowing what you know now I don't think I, I like honestly I don't think I would do anything different than what I know now as far as leading up to applying and getting the job after getting the job I think I should have taken advantage of more resources that were available to me as far as like access to trainings and certifications because I was oblivious to all of this until I started and talk started my YouTube channel and started talking about it like was I out here trying to do certifications no I didn't know that was a thing <laughs> like no I was learning like all of my knowledge well I won't say all of my knowledge but the majority of my knowledge is second and third hand knowledge like I'm learning from people that have been doing this job for 20 plus years like 10 plus years so I'm getting all the knowledge that they've learned on the job and then a lot of these people had like computer science degrees, data science degrees. So I'm getting to learn all of this information from them for pretty much free. Like I'm getting paid also to learn from them, even though I don't have this experience or knowledge firsthand from like actually taking 
classes or going to like get a degree in data science or computer science or anything like that. I feel like I was able to take advantage of that knowledge and skills from other people and I got to skip a lot of stuff like I got to skip a lot of heartache and issues that they went through and I just got to learn the this is how you do it you know type thing. Now as things change of course like growing you have growing pains as things change but I feel like a lot of that stuff I got to skip because I just learned from them oh we've learned this is the best practice do it this way opposed to just trying to do it another way you know write your code this way learning best practices that in skills from other people that have been doing this job for years so I would not say that I would do it differently leading up into getting into the role but I feel like once I got into the role I wish I had knew that like certifications were a thing I'm learning these additional skills because I feel like that would have helped me you know on my way and probably advance a little bit faster than what I did in that role so yeah that's the only thing I would probably change is just taking certification courses and trainings that kind of thing while I was like kind of new you know but again I had so many people at my disposal that was helping me like my manager and other people on my team they were so kind and helpful and we would have calls and they would stay late with me and train me pretty much to ramp up and gain these skills and I'm very appreciative that I had that experience so yeah that's probably the only thing I would change would be to just take some courses to help advance those skills a little bit faster once I got into the role but yeah all right so this is going to be it for the video you guys I hope that you enjoyed if you have any questions please go ahead and leave them in the comment section below and I will see you in my next video bye